Okay, today we're gonna to be talking about animals in the phylum Periphera. Um, they're also known as sea sponges. When most people think of sea sponges, they think of either the sponge you wash the dishes with or SpongeBob SquarePants. However, these two examples are not actually from the phylum Periphera. They are synthetic sponges and not the same as this. Organisms in the phylum Periphera can vary in size greatly. Some can be as small as this Altoid, and some can even be as large as that building. Just kidding, they really can't get that big, but they can be as big as some of the cars passing by on that nearby bridge. Sponges, AKA per Periphera, lack any true symmetry in that if anyone were to cut each one down the center or through the side, the pieces would not be mirror images of themselves or be identical to them. So while we're on a river and you wouldn't likely find sponges here, there are some, some sponges that do live in fresh water, but most of them do live in salt water. And if we were to find this actual sponge while it was still living in salt water, the only animals that would eat it are sea turtles, sea stars, and sea slugs because they lack any real nutritional value. Okay, so the main difference between SpongeBob and this real sponge here is that one, it can't talk, and two, it doesn't have legs. It's actually sessile, which means that it's non-moving, and it's adult form. Perifera actually means pore bearing, in that each sponge has these little dots or pores, commonly known as ostia. Are actually some of the simplest organisms known to man. However, these simple creatures do have some complexities in their cell types and the way that they absorb nutrients. Okay, so the parts of the sea sponge include the central cavity, which is this part. The osculum, which is the opening to the central cavity. And then each of these black dots, the big ones and the small ones, each represents an ostium or singular ostia. Okay, and through the ostia, water enters. So water is entering through each little pore on both sides. And then the water actually leaves the central cavity through the osculum. Water through, flows through a sponge. We're gonna be using a wire. And okay, so the water passes through the sponge, it goes in through a pore, and then it goes into the central cavity and up and out of the osculum. So this is our sea sponge again, and water flows in through the tiny pores on the outside called ostia. And now this is a zoomed in version of where the sponge meets the water, where the collar cells, aka choanocytes, are located. Choanocyte, aka collar cell. It gets its name because of this place, the collar. Um, inside it has a flagellum which is used to move water and nutrients through the sponge and as it moves through the sponge, so here we have a sponge down here, and here's our little collar cell that's like obviously not drawn to size. It's moving, helping moving water into the sponge all the way through the central cavity and then out through the osculum. Okay, so on the surface of each sponge, there are these tiny canals, and their purpose is to increase the sponge's surface area. 
Um, sponges need a lot of surface area because they want as much water as they can flowing through their systems and being exposed to each choanocyte. So, the more surface area it has, the more choanocytes are exposed to water. And in the water, there are the nutrients that the sponge needs to absorb.